Today on the Road Hard Roadhouse, we're doing shocks. We're doing the Rough Country N3 shocks, I think they are. Um, have you had the issue on the, on the road when you're driving down the road and you go over a big bump and the whole front end is just kind of doing the uh, wave on you? Uh, you might want to look at your shocks. I got my uh, kryptonite end links done for my sway bar and all that was replaced and the sway bar links, when they're bad, you kind of go from side to side. Your body rolls a little lot. Well, now I get those fixed and now I go over a bridge and uh, that first bump, the whole front of the rig is just like doing the wave. Not good. Let's get those fixed today. Let's get that video started. This is exactly how I got it from Amazon. Um, I am an Amazon affiliate, so if you click on a link, I may get a commission or not. I'll leave the the um, link down in uh, the uh, description of the uh, video. Got it in a couple days, just like everything on Amazon. It's got these huge brass staples here. These things are stapled the heck in here. Alright. I've got them separated in here. Let me see how it looks here. I've got them separated in here so they don't scratch each other. Um, the decals are in the bottom of the box. And this is why I bought these. Um, I'm not sure if I have any other shocks. I did, but I probably threw them away. But I had some shocks that are normal shocks that you see. And uh, they are definitely not that thick. So uh, if you're on rough terrain, and uh, these may be what you uh, may be what you need. Now, granted, I'll do a uh, review on these after a while. But uh, they are made in Mexico. 
So they're not made in China at least. So has all the bushings. Came with two, like I said. You know, the other one's in here. And you have your uh, rough country decals if you want to put them on. Okay, tools you're going to need for this. Um, you're going to need a 21 millimeter socket, which I'm looking for my black one right now. But uh, you're also going to need a 14 millimeter. You may need a, a ratchet um, or some sort of a uh, power tool here, air or power, uh, in order to get it out. Um, my old um, shaft here is already spinning around. So I may end up having to lock it down with some vice grips or something in order to get it out. Um, it's been in there for quite some time. And they are uh, rough country shocks that are in there. So I don't think any maintenance has been done on this truck in at least three years. So there's that anyway. Your 14 millimeter is up here. And your 21 millimeter is right here so and you may have to get a backing wrench on that if you uh if your power doesn't hit it quick enough It is a 21 millimeter on the back. Holy cow. Look at that. There is no. This shock is not even working whatsoever at all. This thing is worn out. Holy cow. I could put the cheapest AutoZone shock in here from China and stuff and it would uh, work wonders compared to what this is. So uh, let's get these brand new shocks in here. Now before you kill me for not having um, my inner liner in, I am still having issues with a glow plug number one over here. So I am still working on it. So here we go. Now this is how I did this and it worked really well. It's not even like this is even tight up here for some stupid reason. Um, I used a pair of vice grips around the shaft of the uh, shock and then I rotated it to where it was on the side over here and then I'm just undoing the nut and for some reason this nut wasn't even tight, so I really couldn't give you a good video on how to get one that's, you know, crazy in there out. But we'll get this thing out and go to the next step, putting the new shock in. Remember just a few seconds ago when I was talking shit about how easy it was to come off? Well, there was rust at the top of the threads on the shock. So, and I put um, lubricant on it and... Uh, uh, PB Blaster, WD-40, whatever, and it did not um, break that loose. So, I'm having to result to the grinder. Safety first type of thing, I guess you could say. Make sure you don't get anything else in here. Okay, in order to get the steel sleeve inside the bushing, 
I'm not quite done with this one, but I should have showed you from the start. I may on the next one. Um, in order to do it, you're going to have to go ahead and I put some regular oil. Uh, you can put axle grease or something um, around the edge of this little sleeve. Um, and then just I used a rubber mallet to get it through. And then I'll take a pair of vice grips and I'll run it from... I run it from this side to here and squeeze the bushing back in correctly. Okay, this is how this is going to go together. You're going to put the uh, washer on bottom, your rubber bushing like this, the middle piece of metal from the uh, the shock mount is going to go here, and then on top of the shock mount, you're going to put your rubber bushing with the with it just like that and then the the washer and then the nut on top and then that's how we're going to do it right now here's a little tricky part now you got to get this part down here all right so you're going to need to release this um, the band that they have so it doesn't expand now if you do it in a hurry and it catch and it you drive it right down into here you know good for you um if you don't you're gonna probably which i'll probably end up having to do is um jack up the side of the vehicle so this section of the uh, suspension goes down and you can place this sucker in there so either way um do i expect to do it right now this uh, to do it right now where it's easy. No, nothing ever. I nothing that I ever do is easy. Let's see if that did it. Hey, I think I did it. Holy cow. I'm trying to stay out of your way. If you're planning on keeping your rig for a long time, do these little things. It makes a lot of difference in the end. I went ahead and took a wire wheel and went ahead and uh, cleaned up this bolt and the and the uh, the washers. And I, I'm thinking of using different washers, but the bolt is not replaced in this uh, in this uh, shock packet. So uh, so you might want to go ahead and clean up the bolt. Um, there was a little bit of, of rust in here, surface rust in here, and the threads were full of grease and nastiness. So I went ahead and cleaned up, cleaned it up really well, and we're going to go ahead and put it back in. Okay, you just put finger in here same thing on the other side maybe not make as much of a mess as I am and then just start it okay as I said if you have an issue I'm just showing you this because uh, 
this uh, might happen to you. If you have an issue where the shock overextends, what you need to do is jack up the truck until these two holes line up the bottom of the shock and then the brace so once they line up then you just slide it in and go ahead and install it well this is odd this one doesn't meet it's not a 21 millimeter Well, that's weird. Two different sides. Or two different sizes. See how kind of dirty and crusty that is? Run it through the wire wheel, clean it up, paint it before you put uh, put it on. You might want to put a little grease right in here. And the top was easy this time because I doused it in a PB blaster. There is no, this thing is just, just everywhere. Oh my God. There's not even a bushing on top of this thing. You never know what you're going to find when you buy a used rig. Huh. Well, that's definitely not good. And it doesn't want to come out. Had a washer on top. That was it. Junk. Let me show you something else. This there was no sleeves in this shock. They didn't put the sleeves in at all. I can actually stick my finger all the way through it. And if you look, I don't know if you can tell, but that because it didn't have a sleeve in it, that bolt was just wallering it out. It's huge. It's definitely not what it's supposed to be. If you install stuff correctly, they end up lasting a lot longer. No matter what brand you put in. Remember, I'm still waiting on these brake lines. They look terrible. They're too short. And I got to get them all replaced. I got them coming from Crown Crown Performance out of California. They're going to take care of me on that. For some of those that are having issues down here, go ahead and put this in first. And then before you cut the strand, because it's on the other side, but the strand is still there. Um, you can see it right there. And then put these in already. And then it might be a lot easier for some of y'all to just angle it towards the hole. Maybe it won't be easier for some of y'all to hit the hole. Make sure you get the right hole. I'm going to angle it down here so you can get the bolt back in. 
hopefully after you've cleaned it and maybe put a coat of paint on it but you don't have to there we go okay that was easy I'm, I'm talking about that was like extremely easy I did not paint this nut all right I'm gonna keep it on there but I'm not gonna tighten it yet because I'm gonna go ahead and cut this cable that's connecting the uh, shock and hopefully I can get it first time and there we go right hole first time you know what that was a thousand times easier than the other side so I would go ahead and do it this way Go ahead, put your bushing on with this side down. Then your curved washer. And then your nut, 14 millimeter. Get rid of this cable, cut the rest of it off. Using my dad's pliers here, uh, wire cutters. Gave them to me a long time ago. There's that's done. Wow. Okay. Do it that way. Save you a ton of time. When you're tightening these up, when you're tightening the nuts up on top, you do not want to squash that bushing all the way down. You want to have it bulging a little bit, but you do not want to uh, crush these bushings. So that was the rough country shocks. They were the second one that I put in on the front was a lot easier to do. If I was you, I would do it exactly the way that I did on my second shock. Now I kept the first one in there just to show you that you can do it other ways. So don't worry about it. Either way is going to be fine. Whichever way is easier for you. You might have to use a jack in order to do it. Doesn't matter. Regardless, it's easy to do. Now this project is probably a uh, long it take depending on how long it takes you it may be between a two and three out of five nothing too serious um, if it goes really easy for you and every bolt comes out then you're probably looking at a two guaranteed nothing hard whatsoever at all but rough country is coming out with a ton of stuff other than their lift kits They've got an off-road refrigerator that I love to death. It's one of the best things I've ever seen. Love it to death. And they've got all sorts of straps and all sorts of stuff that they're doing now. I really like what Rough Country is doing besides their lift kits. Thank you all for watching, liking, subscribing. Leave a comment down below. Do you have these? Do you like them? Have they lasted pretty good for you? Thank you all for watching again. And as always, if you ride her hard, don't put her way wet.